So here we are back in the lab and we've laid out some of the parts of Cryolophosaurus, which at 25 feet long was a fairly large dinosaur and actually one of the largest during the time that it lived, the early Jurassic period, some 200 to 180 million years ago. Here is what we know of the skull of this animal. It's the back half of the skull. And you can see there's sort of a jagged break along the front. And this is actually the erosion line. This is the part of the animal that was exposed when it was first discovered. Up here we have the top of the skull and you'll immediately notice one of the most characteristic hallmark traits of Cryolophosaurus, this fluted curled over crest that's on top of its head and served as some kind of display feature perhaps for members of the species to recognize each other. Um, the large open space here is actually the eye socket um, and down here we have part of the lower jaw attached to the skull. And on the back of the block, we can see two of the neck vertebrae that have been sort of pushed up against the skull during the fossilization process. In addition to these two neck vertebrae, we also have vertebral elements from throughout the spinal column, from the neck, the back, the hips, and the tail. And here we have a section of four vertebrae from the back, where you can see these two knobs sticking out are the spinous processes, the uh, parts of your backbone that you feel when you run your thumb down your spine. Below them are the vertebral bodies. And on the sides of these vertebrae, we see some of the hallmarks that make this a predatory dinosaur. Thin walls that meet together and actually act as braces on the sides of the vertebrae. And there are deep pockets between them that we think would have held extensions of the respiratory system of these animals. We also have parts of the leg of Cryolophosaurus here. This is one part of the thigh bone. This is actually the head of the thigh bone, the part that fits into the hip socket. So this gives you some idea of scale. And next to it is the lower part of the thigh bone, the, the end that actually meets the knee. And uh, we have a section in between that's missing, but you can see that uh, the whole bone would have been about two feet or a little over two feet long, again, giving us some sense of scale. And another part of the leg here is actually the ankle joint. This is the top half of the ankle joint where the shank meets the foot. Um, it's quite wide as you can see and there would have been a considerable foot underneath it. So again, we are looking at a fairly large predatory animal here, probably the top carnivore in its ecosystem at its time.